Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the Is Top Podcast. This is episode 192 for the third of Sivan in a leap year. So for the past few episodes, we've been discussing the mechanism that underlies creation. We've been talking about this idea of the Shekhinah, which we know of as the divine indwelling, and how the Shekhinah descends from level to level within creation in order to vivify each subsequent world until we get to our physical world here. And it was a very neatly outlined process which you can go back and listen to previous episodes to get the full picture of what's going on. But today, what we're going to really talk about is how there's actually a blip in this system. And this very orderly process whereby the Shekhinah descends from level to level to level and becomes further and more vested and enclosed and concealed as it descends from level to level in order to accommodate further and further coarseness in creation and further and further more feeling of like selfhood and and separation from God, from its source, there's a blip in this system. And the blip was first and foremost historically found in what we know of as the first temple. And what this is really addressing is a bigger, bigger question, which we had brought up already several episodes ago about this idea of how if God is really everywhere and in everything and there's no place devoid of God, how is it that we have some places that we consider to be holier than others, where we say that God is more present, so to speak, in a certain way or more revealed than he is in others? So what we're going to learn about today is about a place like this, is about a place which was found in the first temple, which was known as the Holy of Holies, which within it the ark, the holy ark was, was contained, which housed the tablets, the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And we're going to talk about how it is that in this place, in this very sacred place, what makes it so sacred is the fact that it actually somehow was able to circumvent the normal order of creation. So we, before, before we begin, I'll just, for context, give like a really brief recap of the orderly aspect of creation that we've been discussing in the past couple of episodes. And again, if you want more details on it, then please go back and listen to previous episodes. But in brief, what we discussed is this idea of the Shekhinah. And we discussed how the Shekhinah is really the source and origin of everything that we know of as vitality and life here in our world and in all of the the worlds above us as well. And we translate this word Shekhinah to mean divine indwelling. And another way to understand it is to think of it in terms of it being Malchus of Atsilus. So what that means is that the world of Atsilus is the highest of all the four general worlds. If you've been following along, that hopefully will become, is becoming a little bit more familiar to you. And the Malchus of that world or of any world is the lowest point. The Malchus is the point of kingship, it's sovereignty. So what that means, it's the point at which that world becomes expressed to the outside, where it relates to that which is other than that. Just like a king, when we think of a person who is also a king, the king aspect of them is the part of them that relates to their subjects. And we talked about how this Shrina or this Malchus of Atsilus, in order for it to come down and descend and be manifest in every subsequent world below it, it needed to become enclosed in certain garments because otherwise its light would be too powerful. And we talked about how the garments in which it clothes itself, it vests itself, are nothing other than the will and wisdom of God because the will and wisdom of God actually come from a higher place than this place of sovereignty. So this is why they have the power to contain within them this Shekhinah, this indwelling. And the will and wisdom of God we talked about also are the Torah and Mitzvahs. This is 
God's will and wisdom in the world. And so what happens is that this Shrina becomes vested in these garments and it descends from world to world, becoming subsequently further and further concealed and further and further hidden from the world as it descends in order to, again, kind of make space for these creations, for these, these worlds down here. And the way by which it happens is that we start from, so let's say if we're starting from Malchus Vatilis, which is that origin point. So this Malchus Vatilis becomes enclosed within the world below it on its highest level. So the world below Attilus is, is Bria. So Malchus of Attilus becomes enclosed in the Chabad of Bria, the brain of Bria, which is otherwise known as the Chamber of Holy of Holies of Bria. And then this Chamber of Holy of Holies of Bria, other, AKA the brain of Bria, becomes then vested in the Malchus of Bria, that lowest point of Bria, which creates all of the angels and the, the souls and the different creations that are found there, including what we know of as the Gemara. And then this Malchus of Bria then becomes vested within the Hechal Kodesh HaKadoshim, or the brain of Yetzirah, which is below that. And this whole chain of reaction continues until we get to our physical world down here, which if you you follow the logic, then basically our physical world down here, which we experience as being the Malchus of Asiya, comes from the brain of Asiya, which comes from the Malchus of Yetzirah above that. So I hope that's not too complicated. It really does follow a very logical progression. So it may sound like a lot of terms, but it's it's pretty straightforward if you if you're able to like kind of map it out. Um, so now coming to today's episode and what we're going to be discussing today is coming back to that first temple. So we know that the first temple, we know that the tablets, the 10 tablets, these were physical objects. These are manifest, were manifest down here in our physical world. So thus, by, by uh, virtue of the logic we've been discussing, then these physical objects, just like every other physical object here in our physical world, should be very much vested and concealed and covered up with many layers of concealment in order for us to experience God's Shechina down here. But what we'll learn today is that somehow these tablets we're able to circumvent this process and we're able to be manifest and to be able and to reveal godliness in a much more direct way than regular physical objects. So let's get straight into the text and see how the Altar Rebbe explains this. And hopefully we can have a little bit more clarity about this. So for context, we are in the beginning of chapter 53, which is actually the last chapter of Likutea Marim, very exciting. And we're gonna move on to a new chapter. So the altar of it begins by describing the time of the first temple. And he says that in this first temple, we know that there was the Aaron, the Ark, which contained within it the Luchos, the tablets. And these were found in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, in the Holy of Holies, within the base of Mikdash, within the temple. And in that place, in that place of the Kodesh HaKadoshim, which had within it the, uh, the Ark with the tablets, the Shechina, which again, we know is the Malchus of Atsilas, which in other words means the revelation of the light of the Ein Sof Baruch the light of God. So we know that this Shechina, this manifestation of godliness, rested there and was vested within the 10 tablets with more intensity and more revelation than even which, that which was found in the chamber of Holy of Holies, which were above in the supernal worlds. So think about that for a minute. So again, remember, we talked about how in the general descent of creation and the way that creation happens or happens, then each subsequent world, so the, the Malchus of Atsilas becomes vested within the Heichal Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Chamber of Holy of Holies of Bria, which is a very high world. Then that, then that translates into the Malchus of Bria. The Malchus of Bria becomes translated vested within the Heichal Kodesh HaKadoshim of Yetzira which then becomes vested through the Malchus of Yetzirah in the Heichal Kodesh Kodoshim of Asiya. So what the Altar Rabbi is teaching us here is he says that the, the radiance of the Shechina, the way the Shechina was revealed in that place of the Kodesh Kodoshim, the Holy of Holies, in the temple with the tablets was an even greater radiance, an even greater intensity of revelation than even the Heichal Kodesh Kodoshim of the supernal worlds. So how could this be? 
So the altar explains, he says that this is because the tablet, what were the tablets? The tablets had on them the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are the entirety of the Torah because they come from God's supernal chokhmah, God's supernal wisdom, which is higher than the world of manifestation, higher than the Alma Descalia. So if you've been taking notes, if you've been following along, uh, what is the Alma Descalia? The Alma Descalia we described is actually another synonym for uh, Malchus of Attila. And so that's when we're talking about, basically what, what the ultra is teaching us is that when we're talking about the Torah, and especially when we're talking about like the Luchos, the Ten Commandments, which contain within them the entirety of the Torah, we're talking about something very, very lofty. We're talking about something which is, which stems from a place that's higher than the Shekhinah itself, that's higher than Malchus of Atzillus. And so thus, when we're taking this very lofty thing, when we're taking this Torah of God, which again, we learned about this before, that it comes from a, a place that's higher than the Shekhinah, which is why the Shekhinah is able to vest itself within it. In order for this Torah to come down into the physical world and in order for it to be engraved in physical rock, so the, the tablets were actual stone, right? It, it was not, it didn't come down by way of like level to level in like this like chain, right, rea chain like reaction that was like according to the natural order of the sense as that we've been talking about because this physical world it acts according to nature it acts according to physical nature however the luchos the tablets there's something very special about them they were the 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 work of god so it's something that was it's it's not a natural like it they may have looked natural in a sense that they were made out of stone and made out of like physical material objects but it was like a physical object that wasn't really of this world it was like of, it was of God. It was a, it was something that was made by God. And it was, it said about it that, um, this is in Shemot chapter 32, 16, it says, <laughs> that it's the work of God. These tablets were the work of God and the writing was the writing of God. So it's, it's, it's hard for us to understand what this means exactly, because it's like a physical object, but not really of this world. So these tablets are were coming from a place that was like way beyond the nature of this physical world because this physical world comes from the shechina which is in the heichal kodesh hakadoshim of asiya so again if you follow that whole map of the outline of how creation happens our physical world comes from the the chamber of holy of holies of asiya which gives vitality and uh and existence to the entirety of the world of asiya which includes our world. So our world is, our world isn't even just Asiya. Asiya is like a big world. Our world is like the lowest rung of Asiya. And so the way that Asiya in general and, and also including our world receives its vitality in a general sense is from this level of the Shekhinah within, a, within Asiya, which is the Heichal Kodesh Gadoshim, the Chamber of Holy of Holies of Asiya. And so again, to remember this Shekhinah, which gives vitality to all of the worlds, it is coming from the Malchus of Attilus. That's its original source. But again, Malchus of Attilus is the lowest of all aspects of Attilus. So what is higher than Malchus of Attilus? So there's something called Chochmah of Attilus, the Chochmah Ilah of Attilus. This is the supernal wisdom of Attilus, which what is the supernal wisdom of Attilus? This is the entirety of the Torah, which was actually found in the Ten Commandments. And so the source of the Ten Commandments is not like we experienced them down here in this world. We saw them on those tablets, but actually their true origin, their true source, like their true home was actually in the supernal wisdom of Attilus. And this supernal wisdom of Attilus became clothed within the Malchus of Attilus. Because if you remember the formula, every world, the brain of every world becomes enclosed in the Malchus that's within that world. So thus, by extension, the Chochmah of Atzillus did become clothed within the Malchus of Atzillus, and it also became clothed in the Bria as well. But it didn't get down any further than that. Because these two worlds of Atzillus and Bria are the only worlds which are truly unified with God. And 
truly like they don't really see themselves as being separate from God. So Atsilis in a real sense, in the sense that it really, all the creatures within Atsilis literally have no existence of their own apart from God. They're totally nullified from their source. And in Bria, while there is like a separate separation, like there is, there, there is now a creation, there's extremely aware of the fact of this God that is, uh, that, is, that everything is nullified too. And they're striving to return back to their source at all times. So they have this awareness of the all-encompassing nature of God. So this is why these two worlds do have this aspect of the Chochmah of Attilus within them. And so this is really what we're talking about when we talk about the Shekhinah, the Shekhinah in its pristine, unadulterated state. Because while it's true that the Shekhinah does descend from world to world in that whole chain and map that we've been discussing earlier, it comes down in a very concealed way and in a very, I don't want to say compromised way because it's not compromised exactly, but it is hidden and it's very like not revealed it's very opaque however in its more pristine state in its actual like manifest state this is only found within the worlds of Attilus and Bria by virtue of this chokhmah of, of Attilus this supernal chokhmah within, within Attilus and so this shchina that we're talking about this very very lofty shchina which is really only connected to the two highest worlds which are totally nullified to God this is the same shchina which dwelled within and rested within the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies in the first temple. And the way that this was able to happen is by virtue of the fact that that's where the, the tablets were. That's where the tablets with the Ten Commandments were found. And these Ten Commandments were engraved upon the tablets in a miraculous way. So the Gemara actually discusses this miraculous nature of the tablets of how of, of the engraving upon the tablets in the sense that um, that if you look at the letters Samech and Mem, which are both found in the Ten Commandments, if you are familiar with Hebrew letters, they are totally circular. Like they don't have any, like if you picture like an engraving of the letters in the stone. So for each of the other letters, it's like you can picture, okay, somebody went and like engraved those letters in the stone and you know, there's some part of the stone that stays there, some part of the stone that is not there, and that's how you can see the shape of the letter. But when it comes to the letters Mem and Samech, both of them are like circles. So if you were to just like engrave a circle into a stone, the middle part would fall out, right? If we're talking about regular stone. But in the case of the Ten Commandments, that actually didn't happen. The, in the case of the Ten Commandments, the Mem and the Samech were just like hovering there like that. So that was that was one way that we could actually see in a in a pers perceivable way with our eyes, the miraculous nature of these Ten Commandments in the stone. And this is because they were actually godly. They were made from God. They were, they were the work of the living God. It's called Maaseh Elohim Chaim. And then the Altar Abed concludes this part and he says in brackets that this is what we call the Alma Descasia. This is the hidden world which nests within the world of Bria as is known to people who know Kabbalah. So he leaves off on a little bit of an obscure note, like kind of like opening up a, opening up a whole other can of worms, which I'm sure we could get into another time. But the basic idea, just to conclude and bring all of this together, is to really understand the miraculous nature and what was so special and amazing about the first temple, specifically the Holy of Holies in the first temple, within which the Ten Commandments were found within the Aaron, within the Ark. In the sense that these Ten Commandments really, even though they were physical, even though they were like engraved on physical stone, they somehow managed to circumvent the natural order of creation and they didn't behave nor were they like regular physical objects. Because while regular f physical objects went have to go through this normal chain of descent from level to level and from world to world, the Ten Commandments, by virtue of the fact of them being Torah and them being containing within them the entirety of, of the whole Torah, they are a manifestation of God's will and wisdom, which comes from a much higher place than this Malchus of Atsilis, which is the source of all nature, of all of the regular orders of creation. And so these tablets are basically, in other words, they're a manifestation. They are a, a they were, a, they serve to be a tangible, like a evidence, like a tangible revelation of this higher level, of the level of the supernal wisdom of God, the supernal wisdom in Atsilis, which is really connected only to the two highest worlds of Atsilis and Bria, which are the more concealed worlds, like they're more lofty worlds because they are much more nullified to God. 
So I hope that was not too complicated for you guys. I know we're getting into a lot of terminology and a lot of technicalities, but stick with it. Bear with us. We have just another couple of episodes left, and then we're going to be finished with this book, and then we're going to move on to the next section of, uh, of the Tanya. Very exciting, and it's really cool stuff. And again, while these terms might sound really confusing if you're not so familiar with them, if you do pay attention, if you do take notes, maybe you'll start to see that there really is a logical flow with through it all. And I'm trying as best possible to map it all out for you guys. So yeah, so that's it. And if you have any questions, any comments, if there's anything I said that maybe you want clarified in some way, please leave comments in the YouTube. That's probably the best place to do it. And the YouTube comments underneath the YouTube link for this episode. And I'd love to hear from you guys and we'll continue along these lines tomorrow and hopefully further unpack all of these really intense ideas and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.